Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. Now it's your chance to let me know which games you haven't seen from 1981 before we close out the year. We last left off with the Percussor in the arcades, and let's see what our next game is. Where are we going now? Ah, it's time to go to England and play the ZX81. This is the Perilous or Perilous Swamp. Uh, we have no other information besides this one screenshot, so for all the versions, it's just alternates. Let's pop in and play. This is the system that you can use a cassette tape. You plug in directly to your uh, ZX81 and play. There it is, The Perilous Swamp, a new adventure by Scion Software. In this game, you find yourself in a swampy forest. Your task is to find your way to the edge alive with as much treasure as possible. A beautiful princess is held by an evil wizard. The king wouldn't mind if you, if you could release her. Should you have to leave early, type out, and you'll get out permanently. Okay, to start, press any key. Uh oh, where's the any key? Got it. Yes. The Neighborhood Friendly Swamp will be checking out in 1982. Just kidding, I'm not sure. But you never know. I mean, there's so many games we have in 1982. Who knows what's going to happen? Which way now? North, south, east, west, or northeast, southwest, etc., or map? So we are the X. The princess is there. We'll just go rescue the princess. It looks like we can't go on the swamp or the edge, so let's go east. Your combat strength is 597. Clumsy, you just fell into a pit of noisome water and used 73 points to get out. Your combat strength is 524. A hungry... Nasty werewolf's guarding a treasure chest, and his combat point comes to 10. Do you wish to fight, run, or bribe? Let's fight that werewolf. How many combat points? Oh, uh, if we got that many, let's try 20. Use 20 combat points. You sure smash that monster. Your ill-gotten gains now come to 200 points. Which way now? So we... Oh, we can see the map if we type map. <laughs> MP? I don't know what's going to happen if we type MP, though. I forgot we're using the uh, spongy keyboard of the ZX81. There's the map. Oh, it, it worked. MP worked for the map. So, oh, we didn't want to go south, though. It made us go... I thought I wanted to go east. All right, let's go north east and see if we actually get there. Your combat strength is 504. A hungry, slimy ogre is guarding a jeweled sword. His combat points come to 90. Do you want to fight, run, or bribe? <laughs> uh, just for fun, let's try bri wait, what is it? It's a slimy ogre I don't think we can bribe an ogre, but let's try it bribe the ogre how much do you reckon mi your miserable hide is worth? Uh, let's bribe him with a hundred and see what he does your measly bribe was accepted your ill-gotten gains now come to a hundred points which way do you want to go now? so if we, no, I want, now I really want to see if we do go uh, the way we wanted to go we wanted to go northeast and last time it sent us in a different direction than we wanted to. So let's see exactly what happens. Okay, we did go the way we want. Great, so let's go east. Got to get to the princess. Your combat strength is 504. A foul, slimy werewolf guiding 10 silver spoons. <laughs> 10 spoons. Their combat points come to 10. Uh, let's try running from that guy. You sure run fast if you need to. You survived the swamp with one-tenth skill and nine-tenths luck. You ripped off a total of 100 treasure points off the poor overworked monsters. One of them died protecting their rightful treasure. Congratulations. Pity about the princess. The wizard fed her to a dragon. The king is not at all that pleased. Try again. You could get lucky. Uh, so that's funny. So um, it looks like we ran, but we still... Oh, I see. R running away doesn't run away from the monster. It looks like it runs out of the game, and then you're, you you just leave the princess to die. So that's awesome. So if we say yes and try again, it, it brings us back to the beginning. This is a unique adventure game. We've seen this kind of uh, trope before. It's a, a formula that works really well on the ZX81, which is um, uh, not a lot of graphics, but it gets the job uh, done of where you are on the map, where you need to go. You can see where the X, princess is the star, and then as you move around, it gives you random things that happen, and you have random chance things that happen. I really enjoyed this when we played Nightmare Park, so it's the, it's the same idea, but this is more of a role-playing uh, experience. So which way do we want to go from there? Let's go southwest. Got to remember to type slow on the ZX81. Doesn't like fast typing. Oh, we got much better combat strength this time. A giant bear transported you to another place. Oh, great. A dirty, tough wizard is guarding a jar of rubies. His combat points come to 100. Yikes. Uh, let's fight. Let's fight that wizard. How many combat points? Uh, let's do 250 and knock him out. 
You sure smashed that monster. Your ill-gotten gains now come to 50 points. Which way do you want to go now? Well, if we got warped, where in the world are we? I've also noticed that some of the ZX81 computer games do a full refresh after every type, but then some games do not. Like this one, it's giving us the text scrolling, but it's not refreshing the screen every time. We are in Europe, so the uh, we're in the PAL region, so we should be getting 50 hertz on the screen. And I can understand why some games did that. Okay, so we warped all the way to the west side. Let's just go south. And you, you don't know what's going to happen in this game. It tells us our combat strength, but now we have a nasty fiendish wizard. And that was all about the wizards this time. Guarding 100 pieces of gold, and the wizard has a pet gorgon. Oh, gosh. Okay, uh, let's run and see if we actually run away from everybody. But not fast enough. Now you can only fight. Okay, so we have to fight. Combat points, let's do again 250 and smack him. He won't give you his treasure. Oh, what? So we fought, but we didn't get the treasure? Okay, we'll say fight again. How many combat points? 150, I guess? I don't know what we're down to now. Lucky he was not all well. He had a magic ring marked bat. Your real gotten gains now give you 150 points. Which way do you want to go now? If we went south, let's go southeast. So it's an interesting concept for these kind of games. It's not strictly a text adventure game. It is giving you text crawling across, but it's more in a role-playing sense. It's giving you the information about the game or what's happening during battles. But um, uh, the randomness is what makes it fun. You don't know what's going to happen as you move from one place to the other. It's kind of like a, a, a more interesting random battle. It's not the same uh, experience. And, like this one is uh, a slimy phoenix now with uh, 10 silver spoons. Combat points come to 30. But you make your way to the end. You rescue the princess. You dance, you kiss, you smooth, you go, you go home happy. And that's the Perilous Swamp for the ZX81. Of all the games we played up to this point, it is not bad. It's still around the average range, uh, I'd say, and it works really well for this system. Is it something that you could replay? Definitely. It's got the replayability of the randomness. It's kind of a uh, a text version of a roguelike, of how it randomizes the map, it randomizes what you're going to see. So um, uh, because of that and how well it works with the ZX81, I'm going to go three and a half stars. These two games like Nightmare Park, they're they're pretty cool for the time. I, I could spend a time, if it was 1981, I could definitely see spending a lot of time playing this one. All right, so that's Perilous Swamp. Let's see what our next game is. All right, it looks like we're still in England, and this is, oh man, the Acorn Atom. To appease all those five Acorn Atom fans, this is Pinball, the latest on your Acorn Atom. Let's take a look at the box for Pinball. It is in a cassette cartridge. This is by Bugbite. The version that we'll be checking out. And do we have anything else? I don't think so. We have uh, the, the jewel case, if you prefer that one. But then we also have the entire sleeve, because usually the instructions or how to load the game came from uh, the, the inside sleeve and you pulled it out. All right, so anything else on this one? Nope, here we go. Let's see if it runs. Fingers and toes crossed. At some point in 1981, we got Pinball on the Acorn Atom by Bug Bite Software. All right, here we go. First, we load that tape. Don't know what's going to happen when we try to load the tape. We want pinball. And this one's going to be... Let's switch it over there. This one is going to be where we have to hear the amazing load sounds. But I want to know how to play the game. So I'm going to load the instructions on this one. And just like... it's not, It really doesn't have the same keyboard as the ZX81. The ZX81 was a lot cheaper. But the Acorn Atom still had keystroke types that don't recognize everything correctly. So I still have to go... Wait, instructions. There we go. After misspelling it once before, I don't want to. Again. There we go. Play the tape and then run the instructions. It works. Pinball instructions. Keep the ball in play by controlling the bats with the shift and rept keys. Hitting the diagonal bar opens and closes the gates and the walls. When all three, when all eight letters are lit, the free ball gate from the bottom left corner also opens and closes. So the shift and rept keys. So everyone look down at your Acorn Atom keyboard and you'll know exactly what the controls are. You get the ball through the gate, you win a free ball. You have the choice of a single or dual player versions. Players alternate in the two player version except when the free ball has just been won. So it's still alternating play, it's not at the same time because you're having to share the keyboard. Uh, so two players doesn't work. Score report displays the top score, number of the ball in play, and number one score. In the second player version, the player's number and player two scores are also displayed at the end of the game. Hit return to play again. Got it. Everyone get it? Let's play some pinball. Load that pinball on your Acorn Atom. 
and hear the amazing, soothing sounds of the Acorn Adam cassette tape. All right, we're in. One or two players. Let's do one player. This is it. Uh, it's pinball, but it looks it looks sideways, like we're playing on um, the Atari Lynx, and it needs to be turned to the side. <laughs> and wait a second, this really isn't pinball. This is more like Breakout, where it's designed to look like pinball, but um, all I'm doing is sliding the, the shutters left and right. I don't even see, can tell the physics. Look at that, the physics are, <laughs> it's just floating around. So they call it pinball, but it's the most bizarre pinball we've ever seen ever on the channel. It, it's a sideways pinball, and it's it's not even responding like pinball. It's more like Breakout. Or the game we played, uh, BG, in the arcades, where they mixed Breakout and Pinball. It has the bumpers like pinball, but um, it's sideways. What, 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 what are they doing? Why are they putting it sideways? I don't understand. <laughs> Maybe it's the cocktail version of the Acorn Atom. <laughs> or you have to have a lot of imagination to play. Yeah, and there's not really physics going on. It just bounces around wherever it feels like. Oh, nice. You, you spell out Bug Bite since the company made it. That's clever. Nice little uh, putting your company name in there. Love it. And it looks like there's two ways you can f slide through. But yeah, there's really not flippers. So I don't think I can classify this as pinball. It is a ball and paddle game. But uh, it doesn't really have the flippers of pinball. All right, so with that, let's exit out. We survived an Acorn Atom game. I'm very impressed. So for all the games we played so far, pinball, it, it's all right uh, for the game. Just very bizarre. Uh, I don't know what they were going for with the side view. And uh, if you want something that plays like a, um, uh, a, a, a ball and paddle game, bouncing the ball around, sure, it's enjoyable. It's um, around the average range, but that's pretty much it. That's all you get is one screen. So I'm going to go uh, two and a half stars, just slightly below average considering everything else we've seen. Way to go, Acorn Adam. Thanks for loading. Let's move, let's press forward and see what our next game is. We're now going to, so we're still in Europe, and this is the video computer VC4000 with Pinball, or Cassette 23 Pinball. Let's take a look at the artwork. Here's the front of the box. It has a, uh, a woman, I guess, to invite people to play Pinball, but it looks like we have flippers this time. At least it shows on the, the front of the box. And then for the cartridge, there is... The uh, this is a console that was only in Europe, so the VC4000 plays like you pop in a cartridge, like on the Atari VCS. And so far, we really haven't seen it perform better than the Atari, but we'll see what happens. All right, here we go. Let's pop it and play pinball for the VC4000 released at some point in 1981. We didn't get a manual for this one, but the VC4000 uses the same thing as like the Intellivision, the VCS, the, the console said of the time. So when you first start it up, it has a, a track mode where the game's playing itself in the background. And if you look at the top, it's telling you what game mode it is. So if we push on the console select, it selects the different game modes. So we can see how many game modes this one has. Looks like we're going five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so eight different game modes for pinball, so that's nice. And then when you're ready to play, you push start on the console, and there you go. The, the controller, though, has a keypad. There is no overlay for the keypad. Not that I'm aware of, because whenever you play the game, you have to figure out what buttons it is to play. So we're going to do that. We're pushing start now, and we're in. Let's figure it out. So the controller ha does have a button to press. I'm going to try that one. Okay, it shot the ball off. And it looks like for the, the paddles, I'm using buttons one and three on the keypad. But so far, I am killing it. What? The, the ball just stopped on the pad. I don't know what happened there. The ball just completely stopped. It didn't even go anywhere. <laughs> I don't get the physics on that one. Look. <laughs> when That's crazy. So you can use the paddle and just hold it there. Oh, when you do, it's... Okay, You it lowers your score all the way. So you, you survive, but... But you can just look, you can hold both um, flippers up, and the flippers will uh, keep your ball from falling through, but you lose all the points. That's bizarre. I've never even seen that for any pinball. This console was first released in Europe, so um, uh, pinball was popular all over the world before we got these micro uh, computer video games. And so they were familiar with pinball, and they had to have thought this was very weird for the, the ball to stop on the paddle at the bottom and lose points. That's that's not what's supposed to happen. 
and they're giving us random sound effects, but it's really not doing my, my ears justice. It's like an old school, like 1978 Atari game. But yeah, you rack up the points and play. Let's see if we have different game modes. So I'm going to sl sl hit select on the console. Let's try game mode four and see what that one's like. Oh, okay. It's a game mode four is two player and most likely alternating. So you can see the two scores at the bottom. So let's try game mode five. Looks like it switched the colors up. And let's try this one and see if it's any different. Oh, nice. Game mode five. You got four flippers. So a slightly different board, but really not that much different. But if you enjoy pinball, uh, it, it works pretty good. It, it's got uh, physics of a pinball better than the Acorn Adam, at least. But it is uh, cool with the four paddles. I like that. Or the four flippers. And even on game mode five, it's still pretty easy. And this one controlling uh, two on either side is is pretty fun. All right, let's check out game mode seven and see if there's any difference on that one. Game mode seven and go. Oh gosh, looks like just fast. Yeah, much faster. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> oh wow. Oh man, so for all the pinball games we played, it's it's all right. It's actually considering the VC four thousand, I was expecting something really bad, but uh, a pinball delivers. It's it's good enough. It's not still up to snuff with Atari. It's close, but uh, I was expecting way worse. So pretty good, yeah. For this system, and considering this was released uh, first in nineteen seventy eight. Uh, it's awesome. So uh, for all the games we played at this point, it's still around the average range for pinball. Eight different game modes, making slight variations to it. It's um, it, it's in, it's it's interesting that on the channel we've started from the very beginning. We're seeing the games uh, progress through different eras, and we're about to get to 1982, where this kind of style, where you uh, you pop a cartridge in and then you select what mode you want to play on or variation, then you push reset. That was back in the 70s, and so now it's starting to wane. We can see other games changing that uh, formula, but uh, for the time we still get say so it's average three stars. For everything else we've seen and good fun for if you're a pinball fan so there you go pinball for the vc 4000 let's see what our next game is our next one is a handheld this is the select a game by intex now this one's so rare so hard to come by that i haven't even seen footage of this playing so it's possible that this doesn't even exist but all i have for it is the box to say that is it's something there it is there is a pinball cartridge that you could put in your this handheld by intex but that's it. Uh, I have no other information for this one. So sadly, we can't really rate this. I don't even know uh, how to even start at it. I'm going to give it one star for now. If there's a way I can even see footage of it, I couldn't even find a video footage of someone playing this. Every other person that had an Intex or has recorded themselves playing the Intex, th they don't have pinball. They have all the other ones, but not this one. So really hard to come by. Super rare. And it will not be lost to time. So there it is. There's pinball for the Intex Selecta game. And there it goes. It's now time to go to the arcade. And we're playing Piranha. This one is so cool. Uh, this one is uh, something that some, they took the PCB for Pac-Man. And they just ripped it off. Uh, this is distributed by US Billiards. Piranha. Each quarters and nets big profits. Stop fishing for the little ones. Prana is the big fish in the sea of earnings. Oh, yeah. And here's an example of the arcade cabinet on the side. They got some artwork that they displayed. Looks like Piranha is eating a squid. And then the cabinet itself is... Uh, the joystick is four-way because you're supposed to be moving around like Pac-Man. It's the same board. Uh, and then uh, it, there isn't any other buttons besides the one-player and two-player. And then there's the PCB, and I'd love to get technical with this, but essentially it is a it, it is the most ripped off Pac-Man game, and by the 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 hardware sense, that this is the closest you could get to playing Pac-Man on the, the the PCB. But they've hacked it. You, you'll you'll see when we boot it up. So there's the control panel. Uh, joystick is just a four way, just like it was for Pac-Man. But they have skinned this, made, made it look like Piranha. Yeah, controls are pretty simple. There's our arcade marquee for Piranha. Oh, the Popeye Pac-Man clone. The only Popeye we've seen so far is the one that was on the handhelds. 
and we're going to see Popeye in the arcades next year and the the, the, the clone next year. But uh, so it, Popeye hasn't been released in the arcades yet. The only games we've seen that are licensed, especially Popeye, was a handheld that we got on the Nintendo Game & Watch. All right, so, so uh, let's take a look at the manual. We got that one, too, for Piranha, a technical manual. Uh-oh, this may not have information for us. Installation, starting instructions, maintenance. Does it have information about the game itself? Nope, nothing there. Maintenance and parts, and nope, no help. Okay, so this one is just technical, so uh, this manual is not going to give us any info of the game. For other versions, we have a hack and an older version. We're going to play the first one. So it's sometime in 1981. This is Piranha by GL and released by US Billiards. Man, oh man. You can see here they've uh, the, the title screen and attract mode have different octopuses you're going to go for. And instead of fruit like Pac-Man, it has sea creatures like crabs that you go for for points. And as it goes to the attract mode, the, the screen w w wraps around on the top and on the sides, but there's no maze. They got rid of the whole maze. And as the piranha, you move around freely, but you still have the, the power pellets or the upgrades as they look like little squids on the sides. But the whole idea is you still are moving around the maze collecting all the dots. But listen to the sound. Let's put a coin in and play some Piranha. And push and start. <laughs> it's like they took the Pac-Man theme and said, Oh no, it sounds too much, too much like Pac-Man. Quit, quit, switch it around. Do something. Make that note go there. <laughs> but you can see how the game plays. It's... I don't know how I got out of that one. That was awesome. But the, the, the game plays just like Pac-Man. Um, it's just there's no maze. So th there's really not a, a big strategy on moving around or using the, the walls to help you. You just you just freely go wherever you want. And you can use the, the warps to wrap around the other screen. But um, you're essentially just picking up all the dots. And it's, all, it's a lot more dots than Pac-Man. But listen to the sound effects. It sounds just like Pac-Man when you're eating the dots too. It's crazy, man. And as far as artificial intelligence, I can't tell. It looks like they're just all homing in on me. The squids are trying to eat me. <laughs> and you do the same as before, power it up, then you can eat them. The hunter becomes the hunted. Alright, I'll save this one at the top, see if I can lure them over here. And there's the, instead of fruit, we got a crab for 500 points. If I wrap around, looks like they can't warp, so that's cool. Come over here, boys. So, they didn't really give a, a lot of thought to this. I wonder how much playtesting went into this, because it, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not ideal to play this way without any walls. Where they can move freely to come get you. I mean, look at this. What, 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 there's not a whole lot you can do to make it work. Or at least this one's running away from me. That's nice. Oh, see, I got stuck. I didn't even get to finish the warp. I got stuck on the top. Crazy. I'll go one more time just because I want to hear that intro again. There's another coin. And they have even have the dings, too. And push and start. <laughs> Man, if this count came out today, we would just say they hacked the game. But back then, it's the Wild West of gaming. There's, it's, it's amazing what people got away with. This is proof. Piranha. Oh, he got me before I got the power. The power squid. Or whatever that thing is. We didn't get any instructions in the manual, so we don't know what it's called. So we get to use our imagination. As everybody did in 1981. I'd love to know if there was an arcade back then that had this and Pac-Man. And you heard the similar sound effects coming from two systems. That would be great. Yeah, I mean, look how long it takes you to collect all the dots on the screen. And that red one just follows you. It's, it's, it's crazy how difficult it is. Yeah, there's no way now. So now that I got all the power pellets, or power squids, now I just have to make my way around the map getting all the dots without any walls. Look at this. Crazy. Now, I do have whatever this barrier is. It, it looks more like we're in an aquarium underwater. And that's the, um, like, castle where the mermaid is and uh, different plants in the aquarium. And the prawn is just eating tiny fish and wants to be left alone. Can I get across here? No, that's a barrier, too. Okay, so you can use that to help you out, but... 
Wow. Just for fun, let's see if we can clear this out to get to the next... Gosh. To see if we can get to the next screen, but no. And what's the other squid doing on the far left side over here? He's just going up and down on the edge. I don't know what's happening. Alright, let's see if we can do it. Yeah, the red squid's program really similar to the, uh, the, the red ghost. The only problem is he's going to the top right of the screen like the red squid... Oh, gosh. We did it! I don't believe it. Now let's see if the screen changes. Is it a... Di oh, okay. So yeah, the same map every time, but I can't fault it for that. The original Pac-Man did that. So there you go. That's Piranha in the arcade. Of all the games we played as a ripoff, it's so bizarre that it's Pac-Man, uh, at least in, on, for the hardware, but uh, it changed a lot. Uh, sprite, white, sprite work. Okay, so for the, the games we played up to this point, I still want to say... It's it's really not a good experience. It has the sound effects and the idea of a top-down maze, but it just doesn't work. You can't take away the whole maze because you, eventually when you run out of the power pellets, you're, you're wandering around and you're going to get destroyed by the enemy. So it's it's not as fun as the other ones. So I'm going to say it's slightly below average, the other games we played. It's a cool idea, marketed well, uh, color and graphics are good, but it just it, it, the, the formula is not very good. It needs to be in a maze, or, or something needs to be changed to help you move around than what, what they've presented here. Alright, so here we go. Let's move on to our next game. Piranha slightly below average. Next game we're playing is Pirate. This is the newest Time and Fun handheld. Or you can see here we got a box by Ace Tronic, but it's still Pirate. This one must have been released in other regions, but there's the system. It's a handheld, similar to the Game & Watch, two buttons on either side. No manual for this one, we won't need one. Released at some point in 1981 by VTech. There we go. One of the things I enjoy about the handhelds is when you first boot it up, you see everything that's possible, and you realize that it's going to only display certain parts of the LCD. Love it. Oh, I'm looking forward to that then. That's awesome. All right, let's start with game A on here and push and start. We're in. All right, so the two buttons just allow me to move to three different positions, and it looks like I'm just killing pirates. You just move to the position, and whenever you're there, you, you slice the pirate up. Animation's good for a handheld of the time, but it's still the same formula. Very simple. And we've already started to see handhelds um, add the element of shooting or maze games. So these kinds of simple ones are, are are fun for a little bit, but we are we are seeing better evolution of handhelds already. It's slowly creeping in. Uh, that's right. Yes, we're gonna see that too. Whenever I play the handhelds that ha just have you moving to a different spot and you have to time where you move to the, the different places, it makes me think of Avalanche by Atari and then Kaboom for the Atari 2600, where it's just you just keep playing while, while things are falling. They even have whenever you kill someone, them falling down, which is really, really nice. There's only so much or so far you can go with this, and Nintendo and the Game & Watch have already done it. They've already done the best, well, I shouldn't say that, the best with the two-button formula. We're going to see in 1982 when they had the cross pattern and the flip-up style Game & Watch. That's the next evolution, and uh, but, but Nintendo's already established the best way to have these LCD games. And uh, as we're going to see later in the 90s, if we even get to the 90s, the Tiger Electronic handhelds... There's too much going on, and the, the reason these games th uh, thrived is because of the simplicity. <laughs> oh, someone got to the top when they steal treasure. Nice. So when they get to the top, they steal treasure away. It's meant to keep it simple, where uh, you just have the two buttons on either side, and you're, you're, you're just supposed to move uh, something around and keep something going as long as you can. So with game mode A, it's usually not too difficult. Uh, it always does progressively get faster and faster. But you do game mode B, and you just start right off the bat with it going really, really fast. Let's go ahead and end it. Oh, still a more treasure. One more. And game over. There you go. That was Pirate. Putting on the palm of your hand. For all the games we played up to this point, 
it's 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 all right. It's still around the average range for handhelds, um, considering the other ones we've seen. I'm gonna say two and a half stars. The other the other reason too is it's ripping off Nintendo Game and Watch, so it doesn't get as quite of high marks. And the the Game and Watch is also adding licenses to their games, which is very impressive. The licensing has already started to bleed into video games, and it's starting with the handhelds. All right, so after Pirate, let's see. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that's, a, that's a good point. We need someone to carry on the tradition. Uh, it'll, I'll probably be in my 70s or 80s, and then uh, someone will, will carry on in like 1988. I, I don't know when that'll be. Because I just know that next year, 1982, we're going to be doing games in 1982 for about a year, is my calculation. There's that many games in 1982. The explosion of home computers... There's too many people that can program. You need to you need to stop. Everyone needs to stop. All right, so that was Pirate for Handhelds. Let's move on to our next game. We're next going to the, the Atari home computer. This is Pirate Adventure. Check it out. Yeah, we got big plans. We're going to play some Pirate Adventure. He's getting his Atari home computer ready for his date. But this ad doesn't tell you what happens afterwards where there's really no date. He's... He's, he's just getting ready to play his Atari home computer with nobody, and that's it. Uh, no, one, no one's really coming over, he doesn't have a date. If you had an Atari home computer at the time, I don't think they had dates either. Alright, let's take a look at the box for Pirate Adventure. It's time to have an adventure without ever leaving your armchair with Adventure Number 2 by Scott Adams for the Atari home computer. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. You'll meet up with the pirate and his dafty bird along with many strange sights as you attempt to go from your London flat to Treasure Island. Can you recover Long John Silver's lost treasures? Happy sailing, matey. This one says, like the other ones, it'll take one month to complete. I don't know. Uh, I know we're not going to play one month here. <laughs> Alright, any other artwork we have for Pirate Adventure? We have the ad for the time. This shows all ten... Well, I shouldn't say all ten. There's more than ten, but at this time, uh, on the Atari, there was only ten. We've seen Pirate Adventure, or the, we've seen Adventure 13 so far by Scott Adams. And for other versions, we have just alternate versions. We're going to boot up the first and only one, released at some point in 1981. Here's Pirate Adventure by Alexis Adams and Scott Adams. That's right. When your husband programs adventure games, Alexis has to jump in and, and program her own. I mean, if your husband's doing it, you might as well too, right? This one's going to be way better. Uh, I don't know for sure. Want to restore a previously saved game? No, we do not. And as usual, the Atari home computer version is in cursive. Looks so much fancier. And the same opening we had for all the other ones. And it ends with, please don't copy or accept a pirated copy, even though we're playing Pirate Adventure. We're here. Welcome to adventure number two, a Pirate Adventure by Alexis and Scott Adams, dedicated to Ted Heeran and Paul Charland. Remember, you can always ask for help. Help! I need help. <laughs> oh, wait, actually gave me help. Climb stairs. Nice. That's probably one of the first times we've seen that in our, the channel where we actually asked for help in the text adventure game and they told us what to do. <laughs> no, not this one. That'll be when we get to the Scott Adams graphic adventure games in 1982. I'm in a flat in London. My visible items are a flight of stairs. Sign says bring treasures here. I can say score. Bottle of rum. Rug. Oh, really? Get rum. Okay, we got the rum. Drink rum. Yummy. There's a strange sound. I think it's me. He <laughs> he. We got the rum. We finally drank alcohol in a video game. And it only took us, how many episodes is this? 115 episodes? Something like that. And we have, also have safety sneakers and a snack of, a sack of crackers. Get cracker, uh, crackers. Okay, got some crackers and get sneakers. What are the sneakers for? For sneaking. So now we do climb stairs, just like it told us to do. Now, I wonder how many times I can say help if I need to. <laughs> uh, it depends on who's playing the adventure game. If you're playing the adventure game and you need to get drunk, then yeah, you probably should be playing uh, text adventure games. All right, so now we're in an alcove. Visible items are open window, books in a bookcase. Get books. Books. We got all the books. Oh, a bookcase with secret passage beyond. Nice. Can we open a window? Oh, it's already open, right? 
I must be stupid, but I just don't understand what you mean. Yeah, you are just stupid. I do enjoy how the Scott Adams Adventure games split the game up where you can always see what you're supposed to see. Because there's some that just continue to scroll the text and then you realize, oh yeah, where am I? Or what am I looking at? So it's helpful, but they are still only using a two-word text parser. So it has its limitations. So we have a bookcase with secret passage. Open passage. Go passage. Yes, I'm in a secret passageway. Exits are east and west. Let's go west. Oh, that's the alcove. Okay, go east. Oh, go passage. Now go east. I'm in a musty attic. I have a pirate's duffel bag, an unlit torch, rum bottle smashed to pieces. Sign says opposite of light is unlight. That's got to be a clue somewhere because the text adventure games always prided themselves with the, the most obscure clues or riddles or uh, puzzles, whatever you, you want to call them. And they end up going crazier and crazier and crazier trying to up the ante. In fact, even in England, when they started to get text adventure games, they would advertise on the box for these that it's a text adventure game that you won't beat. It's too hard to challenge people. I guess they, they buy them thinking they can beat them after that. All right, that was a quick taste of Pirate Adventure for the Atari home computer. Of all the games we played, it's still uh, pretty around the average range uh, for, for, for games we've seen at this, this, this time. Uh, I'm going to say three stars, perfectly average for uh, the, the, the purposes of the, the channel. But that's not all. There's also Pirate Adventure for PC booter or IBM compatible computers. Let's see what Pirate Adventure is like on those, starting with any images. No. Okay, we just have the front of the box, which is the same box that was for the TRS-80. Notice it's a little different, but uh, still about the same. Uh, anyway, no other versions. Let's pop it and play Pirate Adventure for DOS. MS-DOS. Early MS-DOS. MS-DOS just came out. Welcome to Adventure Number 2, Pirate Adventure by Alexis and Scott Adams. We can always ask for help. We don't need help. We are masters of this game. So we're back in a flat in London. Obvious exits are none. All we have is the stairs. Bring treasures here. Get that rum. Got it. Drink that rum. I know it's probably going to use, be used for a puzzle somewhere, but <laughs> there's a strange sound. Probably a burp after I drink the rum. And then we also can get those crackers and get the sneakers. Got him. All right. So we can also say score. I bet we have zero, right? You stored zero treasures. That's something else that the first few adventure games did, especially with Scott Adams, is he's basing it on the colossal cave adventure. You, In the text adventure game, you go and find treasures in a cave, and as you get the treasure, you bring it back to a spot, and then you leave them there, and that's how you get your score. Oh, man. So that, that formula is, is so, so old, but they're paying homage to that here with the, the pirate adventure. But they've got to get treasures, matey. All right, so we have a flight of stairs. Let's go climb. Stairs. There, we're in the alcove. We have the books. Get books. The bookcase with secret passage. Go passage. So this would be the first few puzzles to get through where we need to go. So if we go east, that's the musty attic. We have the duffel bag. Get bag. And get torch. Rum bottle smashed to pieces. <laughs> the opposite of light is unlight. Hmm. It's a clue. What is the clue? Light. Torch. I can't do that. <laughs> they used to say, I can't do that, dot, 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 yet. So we have inventory, right? We got blood-soaked book, all right? Pirate duffel bag, unlit torch, bottle of rum. Uh, so maybe we use the rum on torch? You know what, though? It only understands two... Yeah. It only understands two words. So everything you have to do, it, it explains this in the instructions. Everything you have to do has to be in two words. So if you're trying to mix items together, that's a little advanced, but it, it, it's difficult to do with two words that you want to tell the computer what to do. Uh, light is unlight. What about if I look again? What does it say? It just says the musty attic. Look. Attic. Okay, I see nothing special. All these text adventure games always see nothing special. <laughs> oh, so we have to spe uh, spe specify the question with two words, and then it'll say uh, what we need to do next. So, 
this would be the, the time in 1981 where you would uh, try as many commands as you could, uh, consult the manual, look at the back of the box, ask your parents, ask your brother, ask your sister, whoever else in the house have them try to do things, or uh, people that are in the chat, uh, wink, wink. But nowadays, these are kind of lost to time because you can just look up all the answers. P part of the, 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 the uh, lure of these text adventure games is you, you're stuck on puzzles, and eventually you figured them out by trial and error as many times as you can. Oh, so yeah, we tried it, and it just says, you can't do that yet. So there's something we have to do together to mix it together. Let's go back west, and then go back west. So back in the, the open window, climb window. Can I jump out? There we go. I'm outside an open window on the ledge of a very tall building. Jump. <laughs> and like we saw with the other uh, one we played on the IBM when you die, it doesn't tell you how you die. The game just crashes. So we just jumped off and crashed playing Pirate Adventure. Didn't even get any treasure. But uh, you got to get the flow of how the game works. Uh, of all the games we played up to this point, it's still about average. I'm going to say three stars for Pirate Adventure, whether it's on the Atari home computer or on PC booter. Nowadays, just look up the answers. Back then, though, you weren't quite so lucky. All right, and with that, let's press forward and see what our next game is. Yes, all right, it's time to play a very hard-to-find home console, a system that is very, very powerful for 1981 and very difficult to pin down the release date for. This is the uh, VTech Creative Vision, or in other regions, it was the uh, Dick Smith Wizard. It was the uh, Radio Fin. It has lots of names. But for Planet, this is a game we're going to be playing on it called Planet Defender. Of all the consoles we played at this point, this is the the release that came out in Asia first. So I know that in 1981 it was in Asia, and uh, for these games, I have even found some games that they said it was 1981, and it shows it on the box, and it shows it on the manual, but the game is way too good. It, it's, it's like we're getting ColecoVision, or the SG-1000, which is released in 1983, now in 1981. So it's, it's almost unbelievable to believe that. That's correct, yeah. Dick Smith was Australia and New Zealand. All right, let's check out Planet Defender for the Creative Vision. So if the name Creative Vision doesn't ring a bell, it's because this system wasn't as uh, heavily licensed as the other ones we've seen, like the Atari and Television. It was released in other places by lots of people as, as clones of the system because it first came out in Asia. All right, let's take a look at the box. Planet Defender, one or two players. Lots of explosions going on there. It looks like we're going to be shooting some people up. Shoot them up. That's it. Let's flip it over to the back. It has the Planet Defender cartridge. Two controller overlays because if you look at the system itself, it is a full keyboard when you put the controllers together. And you take them away to have one, one person play. You, you slide the overlays like uh, in the uh, Mattel and television. And let's take a look at any other artwork we have for the... Uh, Planet Defender. There it is. The overlay just <laughs> the overlay just says push the buttons on the side for fire and then push start and that's it. And there's our a cartridge for Planet Defender. And we get a manual for this one too. Zoom this out a little bit so you can see the home entertainment and personal computing system. The manual that we're checking out, um, it is dated 1981, but this was not uh, the manual that came out in Asia. This is the one that was released when it came out in Europe or whenever it was in uh, uh, Australia and New Zealand. So uh, that's why it's all in English, but it's just it's so hard to pin down this system. Uh, I really wish I had more people that knew when, when these games came out because it is a big mystery and almost forgotten too. So congratulations, you opened one of those stimulating video games in the galaxy. Creative Vision's Planet Defender. You command the hyperspace cruiser. Aliens from a far galaxy are attacking Earth, but they must conquer the heavily fortified moon base. Man, they're even putting story into the Creative Vision? All right. The story is uh, we're pretty much just going to be flying around shooting something or moving left, right, and fire is my guess. Your space sonar predicts the future. Newly developed space sonar gives you an edge on the alien, evil aliens. You can see them in your sonar screen. Oh, okay, so it's got a radar like Defender. The evil aliens. With no thought of decency, the evil aliens are prepared to sacrifice their own people to destroy you. Oh, so maybe it is Defender. Even though their weapons will not work on the thin atmosphere of the moon, they are under orders to try and collide with you and put you out of action, so keep your distance. And then, nice. How do you start the game or what do you do to play the game? 
Yeah, uh, if you look at the specs, it's way uh, it's a powerhouse console uh, for 1981. And um, as it's released in other regions, uh, it, it ends up c catching up close to like the Coleco or the uh, Sega SG-1000. All right, so the main antenna connects to the TV, then the power cord plug it in, TV set plug in, main unit plug in. Now you're ready for any alien attack. And there's the controller or one of the controllers, uh, the half of the keyboard. You slide the overlay. The, uh, the defense grid is what they call it on the manual. Then press the reset button. And then you have, looks like eight different game modes just like we have with the Atari VCS. Then we blast off. Press the start button on your hand control. Your ship will appear out of hyperspace on the screen, and you have three hyperspace cruisers. You can only use them one at a time. Once they're hit, Earth is lost. Your hyperspace cruiser is your ship. You move the joystick with your hand control, moving it up and down, and your cruiser make a 180-degree rotation to move in either direction. It's It's got to be Defender. And then you fire, yeah, either side. It looks like only one fire button, right? Yeah. And then using your space sonar is at the top of the screen or radar. And then how to make a hyperspace jump. If you're skillful and destroy enough aliens. Oh, okay. So the, the there isn't like a warp. It's just when you kill everybody, you go to a, a, another level. And then there's our different game modes. Uh, game mode one, two, looks like this one is... Okay, so they got one or two players, but it looks like alternating. Try to shoot, I'll shoot the alien... Two players hoping to catch you, your friend, off guard. Battle plan six. So you can see the, the eight different game modes, they break down what they do for you, just like on Atari. And then the score. All right. All right. Let's see what it's like. Let's play some Planet Defender, released at some point first in 1981, and then in lots of other regions in 1982 and three. But uh, here we go. The first release. We got some music. All right. That's the other thing that's been impressive with the Creative Vision. The sound on it is awesome for a home console. And it's, it's already starting on a track mode. And yeah, it's like Defender with a, a really great color for a home console. Everything we've seen on the Creative Vision so, thus far has blown my mind. And the reason is supposed to be a game called Crazy Chewy, which is a Pac Man style game that I, I heard some reports that it, w it did come out in 1981, but I, I just flat out didn't believe it. It was too good of Pac-Man for 1981 that uh, I've uh, moved it to 1982 because I did see uh, other uh, uh, reports of it coming out in 1982. But man, the Creative Vision is a beast. It's awesome. Yes, that's a good point. It does look really similar. Okay, so what we do first is we reset. Then we say, what game mode do we want to do? And you can see I can flip through. There's a two-player mode. Three, four, five, six... And this is you making the selection on your hand controller. But we'll do game mode one. And let's start it up. We play it and we go. It's scrolling really smooth. And yep, moves like the fender where I'm able to switch back and forth. And then whenever you hold the direction, you can speed up or go faster. The fire is interesting that it's... It goes all the way across the screen, but if you cancel that by hitting the fire button... Oh, they got me. If you hit the fire button again, then it, uh, it just resets it. So if you just try to do rapid fire, it goes really fast, but it just in ends up in front of your ship. See? <laughs> but the radar is a nice touch. We played um, the Creed Division's version of Rally X with Auto Chase. Oh, it is... It's too good for 1981. It, it plays like the best... Best version of Auto Chase across everything we've seen so far. I'm not sure what the popping is in the background. Possibly the emulation? is my guess. But the game plays simply enough, and we do have other game modes. But the other game modes just include a second player and make things a little bit faster. What also is so impressive is this is the year Defender came out. And then this game is out as well. Defender First was released in North America before it went to other regions. And uh, the, the, this game we're playing here is the 
like Asian release or in uh, Taiwan of the Creative Vision. But still crazy that they got this pumped out the same year as Defender. Oh, there we go. Yep, they try the kamikazes. It's so difficult. Very interesting. Yeah, thanks, L. Curtis B. And there it is. Game over. So if you want to do a different game mode, we'll reset. And we want to switch it to... I want to see what two-player does. Plug it in a second controller now and push and start. All right, so I think it's going to just alternate play on us. Yeah, it does. So it's it's not two-player simultaneous. We've seen a lot of games so far on the Creative Vision. Majority of them were, were two-player simultaneous, which is another amazing thing. This is so difficult to source this game on a channel that's trying to get the, the, the release dates. And the Creative Vision, I had some sources that said, that said Crazy Chewy was going to be really, yeah, the two-player mode is alternating, that said Crazy Chewy, which is Pac-Man, came out in 1981, but Crazy Chewy is like the best Pac-Man. It, it's so good. It's two-player simultaneous for a console. So I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that it came out in 1981. <laughs> It's even doing the radar, like the Rally X version of it. Or the auto chase is what they called it for this one. Yeah, that is so good. All right, that is Planet Defender. And uh, just bear in mind, the Defender, <laughs> Defender came out this year. And so for this to be something you could play in your home looking that good... It's, it's, it's incredible. Um, it didn't have as many game modes as the uh, Auto Chase or the other ones we played for Creative, Creative Vision, and it didn't have a, as much variety. So I don't want to say it's like the, uh, the one of the best, like a, a five-star game, because we did say the other ones were a five-star game. But um, if you think of it, it from 1981, th this is way above anything you could have seen for a home console. Um, we still have Atari and Television out there. ColecoVision doesn't come out till next year. So for Planet Defender, it's a definitely above average game. I'm going to say four stars. It is uh, the, the sounds and looks better than most of the other consoles we've seen at the time. This is running up to the level of like home computers. But because it doesn't have a lot of game modes and not simultaneous play, I don't want to push it any higher than that. Four stars is still very impressive. So that was Planet Defender for the VTech Creative Vision. Let's press forward and see our next game. Since we're going in alphabetical order at the end, then our next game is Police Jump, also for the Creative Vision. Let's take a look at Police Jump and see what that one's like, starting with the box. Here we go. One or two players. Police Jump. What in the world? Okay, so it looks like Crazy Climber. Or no, it, it's it's uh, King Kong. But instead of King Kong, it's a inmate at the top of the building and a policeman climbing the building with... A woman crying at the top? I guess the, the inmate has stolen the woman. And he's throwing tires down. Oh, man. It's got to be Donkey Kong then, right? Let's flip it over in the back. So, Police Jump. Yes. It is a Donkey Kong clone. Same year that Donkey Kong came out. Police Jump includes the overlay and the complete play instructions. So, let's start with any more artwork we have for this one. After that one, there's the overlay, and still keeping it really simple. Uh, it's not doing what Intellivision did. With, uh, you have a lot of instructions. All this is start on the overlay in the same position. And then there's the cartridge will pop in. Oh, yeah. And we got a manual for this one. What is Police Jump? Oh, man, yes. You've taken the toughest job of your career with Creative Vision's Police Jump. You're a police inspector. The notorious criminal, Dangerous Dan, has kidnapped a beautiful rich girl and you've tracked him down to a skyscraper hideaway. <laughs> it's like they're telling a story that surrounds the Donkey Kong story, but a little different. That's the easy part. Now you have to go up there all by yourself and get him. There's 20 floors between you and your goal, every one of them filled with treacherous booby traps. The first five floors is to reach... Okay, so climb the first five floors. Dangerous Dan lurks at the top. The next 10 floors are still under construction, so they've changed the game. So they give you a different screen, just like Donkey Kong. 
And then the last five floors, the chase is more complicated and it's harder to get them. Okay, nice. We're looking for uh, possibly a game that's going to give us different screens like in the arcade. And that shows us how to get ready, get that overlay, slide it on your creative vision, and climb. Push start, and then they give you tips just like in the Atari manuals. Because this one is one of the very first times that you could move on a platform and jump at home. The only other one we've seen on the channel was Monkey Shines for the Odyssey 2. Uh, and before that, it was Donkey Kong in the arcades. So this is way ahead of its time. There's 16 ways of getting Dangerous Dan. Some are much harder than others. You have to pick the one that's easier for you. Does that mean there's 16? Whoa, look at that. There's 16 game variations on this. <laughs> it's obviously a ripoff of Donkey Kong, but wow, what a ripoff. For something you could play, look at that, 1981. And um, it originally came out in Hong Kong uh, or Taiwan, but... Uh, the one we're playing is, uh, this, the manual we're reading is the European manual. But we're playing the first version of it, but look at that! And it has two player versions too? It looks like this is still alternating play, but it's Donkey Kong! Yes, let's play some Donkey Kong at home! We just saw it in the arcades. Yeah, I'm looking at the different variations, there's a lot here. That's amazing. All right, so the different versions are just uh, versions from different parts of the world. We're going to play the first one we could play in English. So here we go. This is Police Jump, released at some point in 1981 for the Creative Vision. For VTech. Oh my gosh, yeah, they have a giant criminal. And it starts the game off in attract mode like an arcade game. So I'm not touching anything or doing anything. <laughs> it's, it's, it's basically like Donkey Kong. Wow, this is incredible had no idea this one existed. Yeah, and we get the 2600 version next year, I think. So, uh, what in the world? Th this is blowing my mind. All right, let's reset. Uh, we'll start with just game mode one. So I'm gonna push uh, start on this one. And it gives us this little uh, cutscene of the, the climb. It looks like we're going from the bottom. And then we take over from here. Get a Diddy to play. He makes sound effects when he walks too, like Mario. <laughs> We're playing a dumpy little policeman. You got the ladders you can climb. And you got to jump. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's interesting because <laughs> the hit detection is a little weird. But the, the jump mechanic is better than Monkey Shines that we played on the uh, Odyssey 2. So, uh, we're, we're all about firsts here on Chronologically, Chronologically Gaming. This could have been one of the first times you could play a platformer where you jumped at home. I don't think I can jump two of them at the same time. Let's see. <laughs> it worked! Did we get points? Looks like we're just getting points for staying alive. I didn't get points for jumping that. Yeah, I can't tell. Yeah, it looks like they're just scoring points by how long you stay alive. That's all it is. They're not giving you points for jumping over anything. I guess it's easier to program that way, right? You make it to that level, so you go to the next one, and it should give us a new screen after that. Wow, look at this. And then we go to the next screen, and the next screen is breaking it apart, which wasn't part of the arcade. So they started with the first ripping off Donkey Kong, but now they've gone into new territory. What in the world with tornadoes? Okay. And conveyor belts. So that kind of rips off what Donkey Kong had. But yeah, different kind of idea. This is so random with the tornadoes. I don't, I don't think I can... Alright, we made it. I don't, I don't know how I did that one. Yeah, the scroll, the vertical scroll, you can see it's it's having to chug a little bit. But still really impressive for 1981. A little, look at the color. There she is. The criminal has... Kidnap somebody. They didn't call Donkey Kong a kidnapper, but now I'm thinking he really was a kidnapper. He's just an animal. Oh, we can't jump over him though. The the platforms to destroy the criminal. This also doesn't make sense. Why am I doing these platforms when um the criminal's over there? How how is this gonna help catch the criminal? <laughs> I'm the worst police officer in the force. Don't think I can get over there now. This is going to be... Oh, man, gosh. Wow, yeah, how many lives do I have? That's going to be tricky. Let's see if I can do it before... Oh, man, they reset it. Great. Now, when you play Donkey Kong, you could jump over 
um, these sections to... Wow! Yeah, you could jump over them and they'd go away, but not... <laughs> oh man, there's obviously an issue with the emulation. But the, the, the game over lets you know, yeah, it's really game over. It's terrible. Okay, we'll, re we'll reset after that one. Let's do a different one. If I switch the game modes up, you can see game mode 2 goes to the next area. Game mode 3 goes here. Game mode 4, and then 5 looks like it starts to repeat. And now it starts to get uh, fa uh, faster and harder. And then it also says which one's going to be one player or two player. So I can start on the top. Let's start here and go there. Let's see if this one works. So starting here. Oh, wow. It's moving. The different game modes make it move faster. I thought it was because the game was going slow, but look. Everything's faster now. Wow. And the way this plays, it's um, scrolling up like you're, you're climbing one large building, which is a nice touch. I like that. But, I mean, look at this. We're moving even faster than we were before. I don't know how I'm going to get over to that side. Oh, gosh. I don't know how I did that. Uh, we did it! <laughs> yeah, it's moving so quick. Now I want to try the different game modes to see how fast it goes. Wait, why isn't he dead? I thought we see a, a cool cutscene at the end, but that might be the end of it. Alright, let me try a different game mode. Let's do a reset, and it said 16 game modes, so... I want uh, 14, 15, okay, let's do game mode 16. Here we go, and starting this one up. Okay, game mode 16, I'm not seeing it moving faster. It's close, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna get any faster than the other one. Can we make it go, go, go? <laughs> And then it just repeats that one over and over again. Wow. All right. I am impressed, considering we haven't even seen the Atari 2600 version of Police Jump. Uh, of all the games we played at this point, I'm going to say uh, Donkey Kong has come out this year. If you got your hands on Police Jump and playing this at home, it would be its top tier. So I'm going to say of all the games, this is a five-star game. Uh, I, I'm amazed that this exists in 1981. And we're going to see a lot of versions of Donkey Kong and ripoffs of Donkey Kong. It's still pretty cool that you're playing a platform where you can jump at home. And I don't know exactly when it was released. Which one was the first one? Was it Monkey Shines or was it this one, Police Jump? I do not know. But I do know this, that we're going to put our video game playing on pause. Had so much fun this evening. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone, on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, that's all we have for today. And like I always say, uh, go get that pirate treasure. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9pm Central, so join us and let us know if you miss any games along the way. This video would not be possible without RetroArch and LaunchBox. Please tell your friends there's some crazy guy out there trying to play every single video game. You can always check out Chronologically Gaming on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We will catch you next time.